So we're going to talk about equations of lines for section 3.5 today. This is a really important section that you spend some time on as this is an area that a lot of people do not do well on the test. Um, it's again essentially a section that pulls together ideas from 3.1 through 3.4 so it's you have to have a good grasp on all of that information to get this one down. The very beginning is actually kind of in my opinion just a little bit of a refresher from what we learned from the other sections as well. So this one says graph using slope intercept form. So it's just giving you another option to graph a line. On the test though, please remember you will have a question from 3.2 um, that, sorry, 3.3 that makes you use intercepts to graph it. So please look at the directions. So if I solve this and put it in y equals mx plus z form, so I added the 7x. So in this case, my slope is 7. Y, y intercept is 0, 3. So my y intercept 1, 2, 3 is here. And remember, we need two points. So I'm going to use my slope. Remember, that's change in y over change in x. So that's a positive 7, which means go up 7. And it's a positive x, so go to the right 1. So if we go up 7, we're at 10. We go to the right 1. I see a lot of people use this method all the time and I want to caution you because if you make a careless mistake there's no checking it essentially but at least make sure that the line is going the right direction. Um, you can always do one extra checkpoint to plug it in but if the problem asks for graphing with intercepts which you will have in your test you have to use it. If you use this technique it will be incorrect. So going to number four it's already in y equals mx plus v form, so my slope is negative 4. And my y-intercept for this problem is the origin because there's nothing there. So I start here. Negative 4 can be rewritten as negative 4 over 1. And I always write down change in y over change in x, which means I'm going to go down 4, 1 to the right. Negative y distance means go down. Positive x goes to the right. So I'm going to go down 4 and to the right 1. Double check this should be the negative slope which means I'm skiing downhill which I am. I am as I go to the right I am going down. Okay, so it's a negative slope but again the best check would be to also plug in another point. So we could plug in x equals 1 here we would get 1 negative 4 which is already the point I got but just meaning you can plug in another point. What I really consider the new material is starting this point. So there's two ways that they may ask you to write an answer. They may ask you to write the answer in y equals mx plus b form, which is again slope intercept. That's y equals mx plus b. And we have our standard form, which is ax plus by equals c. Some books don't specify it, but I think it's best for you to always do this. I will tell you that I think there's at least one homework problem that does it incorrect. But if I ever ask you for standard form, it means no fractions and the leading coefficient is positive. In the text, sometimes they don't follow this own rule, but it's really important that you understand that's really what the definition is. The other form that is new for this section is the point slope form this needs to be memorized. I will say there are some of you, like I said, that I'm going to just keep writing this down because I'm telling you it's that important, the slope intercept form, that use y equals mx plus b form for everything. And that's okay, but you have to be careful because the problem is going to ask you to finish it and a lot of y'all don't know how to finish it if you're just using the slope intercept y equals mx plus b. So I strongly recommend using the point slope formula. You need to memorize it. So remember I'm telling you about a data dump page. Write down your formula for your slope. How do I find slope? Two ways. Okay. Slope formula or find the equation using y equals mx plus b. Point slope form, write it down. I want you to realize this is not a magical new formula. If you look at the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, 
it actually is just clearing that denominator piece. So if I multiply both sides by x2 minus x1, you notice that it becomes back up here into the same piece. To find an equation of a line, you need, so to find an equation of a line, you need two things. You need a point and you need the slope, always. That's always the case. So on each one of these problems, I want you to ask yourself, do I have a point, do I have a slope? If I do, I can use the point slope formula, which is on the left. Sometimes y'all can shortcut it and use the right-hand side. However, I find that a lot of you do not use that correctly. So I'm not, I'm not against it, just please be careful. So I'm gonna tend to use this for every problem. Now you need to read it. This problem asks for you to put it in slope intercept form. So the goal is to put it in this format. But a lot of people try to skip steps and I can skip steps on the first one. However, I don't really think it's a good idea for many of you to do. So I'm gonna use the point slope form. So y minus five equals four x minus zero. Because what I'm doing up here is I'm plugging in to my point and my slope. So now I'm going to simplify. It wanted it in the point, uh, sorry, in the slope intercept form, so I needed to get it in y equals form. Now I will say because this is a, what I, is again essentially here, my point they gave, which is 0, 5, is a y intercept. So this is the only time you actually could go directly to this because they gave me m is 4 and they told me because the y-intercept it's 5. But you cannot just jump there. A lot of y'all want to do that on other problems. Only can do that if the point given to you was 0, 5, which is a y-intercept. So going to number um, this, the second one here. We have a point given to us and we have a slope, which you remember that's what I need. So I'm going to first start off writing down, because again, I think the best thing for y'all is to write down the formulas because it will make you memorize it. So y minus 4 equals my slope is negative 3 fourths and an x plus 2. The negative and negative cancels. So I want you to stop and make sure you understand how I plug that in because that's really important. So we're going to do one now that has a fraction involved because that tends to be where we tend to make more mistakes. So I'm going to distribute. I get a negative 3 fourths x. I'm going to do this other piece over here. So I have a negative 3 fourths times 2, which I can rewrite as 2 over 1. That gives me a negative 6 fourths, which is a negative 3 halves. Now you could write minus 3 halves or plus a negative 3 halves. It doesn't matter at this point right now. But you have to get that fraction form. Do not convert it to a decimal. They don't want it in decimal form. So now I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So I'm going to get y equals negative 3 fourths x. And again, I'm going to break this over here so that you can see what I'm doing. So I have a negative 3 halves plus 4 over 1, because it's 4. I need a common denominator, which is 2. So I get a negative 3 halves plus 8 halves. Now my denominators match. I can add like terms, so keep my denominator, which is 2. Negative 3 plus 8 gives me a 5. So my answer here is y equals a negative 3 fourths x plus 5 halves. You had to use either, again, extra steps, y equals mx plus b, which they do show you that as an alternative method, or I strongly recommend use your point slope formula for every single problem. Memorize it. At any time you need to pause this, rewind it, listen to it again. What I see from c is it's a special case. The reason why I know that is they tell me it's horizontal. I'm not even going to look at other formats. Remember, special cases means draw your picture. 
So I have a point that goes through negative 412. So this point again is negative 412. And it's horizontal. So this point here is negative 412. So when we talked about this before, we said, all right, does it have an x-intercept or a y-intercept? So this is a y-intercept. So it has to be a y equals line. This line means the y stays the same all the time. So the y value is 12. That's my answer. You do not do long steps with special cases. Draw, draw your picture. If you try to do it in your head on the test, y'all are already kind of worked up when you get to a test. Easy to forget. So again, remember data dump. Data dump your special cases. Data dump your slope formulas. Data dump your point slope formula. How do I get an x and y intercept? So looking at D, we are also going through the point negative 4, 12, which is in the same location. But we're now doing a vertical line. So we ask ourselves, does it have an x-intercept or a y-intercept? This has an x-intercept. This is at an x value of negative 4. So the point is negative 4, 0. Since it has an x-intercept, it's an x equals line. x equals a negative 4. Because every point on that line will have an x value of negative 4. So going to example um, E here on my paper, we have two points. But remember what I said. You need a point and you need a slope. I can find my slope by using my slope formula. So 1 minus 5, negative 8 minus negative 2. So notice if you don't know your slope formula, you can't do this problem. Please, before you go any further, check negative 8, 1, negative 8, sorry, negative 2, 5. So it did work. So I get a negative 4 on the top. This becomes a negative 8 plus 2. So I should get a negative 6. So that simplifies down to a positive 2 thirds. Really important, the negatives cancel out. So my next step, I'm going to use y minus y1 equals x, sorry, m times x minus x1. I'm using my point slope formula. This is my slope. And I'll tell you, it doesn't matter which point you use. So you pick which one you want to use. If one of them has no negatives, that's easier to use. In this case, both of them have a negative. So I'm just going to pick this second one. It wouldn't matter. So I'm going to plug it in. y minus 1. 2 thirds is my slope. x plus 8 because of that negative canceling. Again, I'm going to distribute here. I'm going to take this piece up over on the next line. So I'm going to put a box up here so you can see what I'm doing again. I have 2 thirds times 8 over 1. That gives me 16 thirds. Nothing simplifies there. So I'm going to bring this over here. So I have y minus 1 equals 2 thirds x plus 16 thirds. I now need to add 1 to both sides. So I'm going to get y equals 2 thirds x plus 16 thirds plus 1, which is 1 over 1. I need a common denominator there, so I'm going to multiply that by 3 over 3. y equals 2 thirds x plus 16 thirds plus 3 thirds. Denominators match. Keep my denominator, add my numerator. So my answer here, y equals 2 thirds x plus 19 thirds. Now, real quick, I'm not going to take time on this video, but I could absolutely take the point I did not just use and plug it in and make sure it makes a true statement. So if I plugged in the negative 2 here, I would get a negative 4 thirds, which would then simplify to 15 thirds. Um, and so 15 thirds simplifies to 5, which would verify that's correct. So looking at F, remember we need a slope and we need a point. We have the point 7, 2. We're going to use the words perpendicular to be able to get the slope. So the first thing we have to do is find the slope of that equation of the line. So I have a negative x plus 
plus 3y equals 12. Add x to both sides. Divide every term by 3. So that's all I did here. Again, I added x to both sides. I divided every term by 3, being careful. So my slope of this line is 1 3rd. My perpendicular slope means take the negative reciprocal. Very important that you flip it and take the opposite sign. So I now have my slope and I have my point. If they had said parallel, I would have used the same slope. So now I'm going to use my point slope form, plug in what's given to me. So I'm plugging in the point and the slope, being careful of my signs. I get a negative 3x plus 21. Add 2 to both sides. So my answer here is y equals a negative 3x plus 23. That's in slope intercept form. So our last question deals with asking for you to put something in standard form. Again, you're not going to see this very often, but you again need to make sure you double check your directions. Most of the problems on the test will always ask for slope intercept form. But if we want it in standard form, we want everything to have no fractions and we want the leading coefficient of x to be positive. So in this case on the a, I just need to add 4x to both sides. And that actually is standard form because it's ax plus by equals c. On B, I need to multiply every term by the LCD to clear the denominators. So I'm going to multiply every single term here by 4. Don't do it in your head. Same idea as what we've talked about before. Make sure you do every single term. So I get 4Y, and here I'll get a negative 12 over 4. The 12's cancel, sorry, the 4's cancel. I'm up with a negative 3X. Here I get 20 divided by 2, which is the same thing as 10. So on this one I got 12, sorry, a negative 12 divided by 4, which gave me negative 3x. Here I got 20 divided by 2, which gave me the 10. So I've now cleared my fractions. I now need to add 3x to both sides to move it. So this is an ax plus by equals c. Standard form. So lastly, we're going to multiply through by 3 to clear my denominator. This gives me 3y equals 2x plus 19. That was a pretty easy one since all the denominators matched. I'm going to subtract the 2x from both sides. Now, in my math lab, in this section, sometimes it's going to accept this. But I need you to know, we never want a leading coefficient to be a negative. So you really truly should flip the sign. Multiply every term by a negative 1, which gives me 2x minus 3y equals a negative 19. That is my answer for E.